Today we're going to talk about the Autodesk Design Portfolio, Sketchbook, Alias, Dynamo, and V-Red. We begin in Sketchbook, one of the leading sketching tools with millions of daily users. I'm going to create a real simple side view. Now, Sketchbook works well with Alias, so I bring the canvas into alias as an image plane. Traditional alias modeling is curves and surfaces, so you have to build curves and then create surfaces. This un requires an understanding of continuity and how to attach curves together so that they retain their history. And once you've built a model this way, you have a series of curves, a curve network that has history that creates the surfaces, so now as you modify your curves, the surfaces will update. New in 2020 is the addition of sub-D modeling inside of Alias. So this way you can quickly use these fast form finding tools to build the shape that is always continuous without having to think about how to maintain continuity or worry about positional continuity getting lost, gaps being formed, or maintaining curvature. So once I've built this shoe, I can project my sketch onto it and then use traditional NURBS modeling techniques with these sub-D elements. So now I'm going to project these curves onto my sub-D. I notice I want to change the design, so at this point I go back into Sketchbook. Sketchbook and Alias have a live link, so if the designer changes the design inside of Sketchbook, you can instantly update it inside of Alias. So I'm going to reproject some new curves onto my surfaces, and I'm going to trim them out. With alias sub-Ds, since the limit surfaces are actually NURBS, we can trim them using Autodesk Trim or alias trimming tools without having to worry about rebuilding any of the sub-D surfaces. Also inside of alias, we have a stitch and seam tool. This creates a procedural seam surface and then we'll fill the seam with stitches. You have full control over the length, diameter, spacing. I can even add in some jitter to give the stitches a less perfect feel. Once I've created them, I can then assign a different material so that I can start visualizing what the shoe would look like with some stitches built into the design. For the sole, I'm going to create the tread that I want to repeat over the surface of my sole. Alias has Dynamo inside of the product now, so one click launches Dynamo. I worked with a scripter to develop this very basic script and which allows me to just grab my sole and apply it and then grab my tread and add it and Dynamo will then place the tread all over the sole of the shoe. Now since I'm a designer I know how to use Sketchbook so I have a script that allows me to use black and white images to define some of the parameters of my tread. In this instance the black and white image will adjust the height of my tread. I can also use that same image to adjust the XY scale. And this is interesting. So now that I understand how this works, I can go in and start being a little more creative. In this instance, I'm going to use black and white to create a more organic feel for how I would like the tread to be scaled and bring that in and apply it to my same script. And I get a completely different result 
that with a traditional modeling technique would take a weeks and now I can make quick ideation and variation using sketchbook to drive my patterns once I'm done I bake the geometry into alias and now it's inside of alias because alias has a strong history engine I can actually go to my original tread and adjust the scale of my original piece of geometry and it will run through Dynamo and update back to my geometry without having to go back into Dynamo. So now I can do variations. The next step is to bring my completed work into VRED to prepare a rendering. I already have a library of materials here so I can apply my laces, I can bring in a carbon fiber pattern, maybe I have some suede or a canvas material. Dragging and dropping a decal into VRED is very simple. You're able to bring any black and white image in and use it as a stencil. I can also bring in a PNG with an alpha channel if it has color and quickly place them onto the geometry. Uh, material creation is easy. It's drag and drop, bringing any texture into the scene. Again, just drag and drop your texture onto the part where you want to apply that new texture. Easily adjust it to quickly make a series of material variants. Give a little bump map. And once I've come up with my how I want the look I can start placing my shoe for more of a photograph scenario so now I'm placing two shoes and I'm actually going to replace the sole with the, a different sole so I have multiple variations of the sole so I'm going to clone my first shoe and make a second copy so now I can artistically place them and then render them out as a full global illumination ray traced image and here are the results